Hi everyone, I'm Lisa. I'm the founder of Image Is Marketing and welcome to This Is Business Hangout. I'm here today with Leslie Bryant, AKA Lady Clipper. In my opinion, one of DMV's coolest new lady barbers. Um, now, Leslie, I've known you for six to seven years. The whole point of this, this conversation is that I wanted to get you online to talk to you about your career transition. to change a brand plus a product. So I just kind of want to know um, what we're going we're to talk about. We're going to talk about what got you, what inspired you to change or what, what happened to make you change your career. And then maybe we'll take some questions at the end. Lisa, you're going in and out. Some of the connection problem. Hang in there and we'll be back if um, um I can hear you now, Elise. Something happens. And if not, then take in what you can and then we'll just How did, why did why? Why? Why are you now something completely different. Um, Lisa, I can I can hear you, but I can't I can't see you. But I, and it's going in and out. Okay. Well, I hear you. So, all right. Let's continue. Go go ahead and ask the last question, please. Okay. My first question was, um, you were a graphic designer, and now you're a barber. How does that happen? Well. Um, you know, life happens. So <laughs> um, I was a designer for about 12 years. Um, went to school at the Corcoran, was really into it. Um, you know, really, it, it happened to me. I was laid off on my job uh, about two years ago, and I decided, um, and you know, corporate America may not be the best fit for, the, for my next step. So I decided to do something I had always been interested in um and that was barbering and one thing led to the, to the other and i got my license and i'm here <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure it didn't happen that instantly so okay you had always you said you'd always been interested in barbering personally i didn't know that until until you you you, you were no longer working at the company and then you just I mean, I think you disappeared for a few weeks, and then next thing you know, you're saying, oh, a lot's happened, and I'm in a barbershop down the street. And I mean, how do you, how does a graphic designer who is interested in being a barber be a barber? How do, how do you even do that? Well, I think my journey began, you know, I think, you know, as an artist, you, you, there's, you're always looking for new opportunities to expand and to express yourself mm -hmm. and for me barbering I, I mean i've always been into hair and fashion and you know i like makeup i'm not a i don't know you know i haven't been trained in those things but i've always been into you know as you always say you like pretty things <laughs> so, <I do>. yeah <laughs> so in liking pretty things and loving art um it just sort of made sense for me to, to just go ahead and follow my heart and, and try something new. Now, I didn't tell a lot of people about it because I 
was a little bit ashamed because coming from a background where education and, and um, I would say sort of a, an elitist background, mm -hmm. um, barbering may, was not something that I felt what would have been acceptable for my parents, um, especially after getting my degree and working in a field for so long. Why would I, you know, choose a trade over something that, you know, that, that, that took years of education and, 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 and struggle to, to right. get. Me. Right. Um, so, so for me, it was, it was a natural transition, but for everybody else around me, it just came out of nowhere. <laughs> yeah. like, yeah. I was confused for quite a while after you told me, I said, um. I think um, some of my mem family members are still confused and consoled. <laughs> and, 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 you know, to them, I say, I got this. <laughs> Yeah, you always say you got this. So, and pretty much everybody just throws their hands up, like, okay, she says she got it. She says she got it. So, okay, so do you want to? I don't know, you don't have to, but do you want to actually go a little bit deeper into the specifics of how, again, you know, no longer a graphic designer, and then you. I don't know how do you how do you how do you start how did you get trained like how did you did you go to school and then just start working or did you I mean what did you do well first of all when I got laid off I took my severance pay and I decided to go home to Trinidad and sit on the beach and really think about what my next step would be um, okay I just knew something in me knew that corporate America although the pay was great was not going to feed my soul in, a, in the way that I needed at, at this point in my life. So um, there was, I guess, growth and transition for me um, happened with that layoff. So I sat on the beach and did a lot of self-talk and relaxed and spent time with my, with my dad. And when I came back, I, I really didn't have a clue of what what I wanted, what to do. Right. Um, and I was all, you know, one day I went to go visit my barber and to get my hair cleaned up in the back and my sideburn shape. And right. I was chatting with him and told him, you know, I got laid off and, you know, I was a little, um, I was sort of a floater as far as what my next step would be. And he right. suggested, he said, well, you're always trying to cut your hair yourself and you're always <laughs> trying to line something up. And you're always coming in here for me to fix it. So you're, and you're an artist, you're halfway there. So why don't you think about barbering school? I was like, well, I, how much does that cost? And how would that, um, and, and he just was like, he was like, look, if you want to shoot for the, for, the, for the stars, shoot for the stars. Don't worry about it. You know, you have to invest in it if that's what you want to do. And I was like, well, I, I do like, I do like coming to the, I like the barbershop ex experience. I like how it feels, it's casual. People are, the, I feel like, are the most honest in you know the beauty shop or the barbershop. Yeah. Um, so for me, I, I told him, I said, you know, tell me what schools to look up and, and, and I'll take it from there. He suggested it, I did the look up and um, started school like a month later and one thing led to the other. My teachers were great. They supported me. They, um, you know, even when I did cuts that I didn't believe were where they were supposed to be, they were. They just kept saying, you know, keep bringing your models in, keep practicing. You know, this is this is this is something you want to do. You can do it. I, we already see that you have it. So with that motivation, it took me to the next level. Like I just kept hearing their voices in my head, like keep going. And for me, at that point. Um, going to school and not picking up a career right away, it was sink or float. I had bills to pay, you know? And yeah, so you, you, you're a little bit more motivated when, the, when, when your life is on the line. I <laughs> I know you know? When you're trying to figure out how are you going to keep this roof over your head. Right. Um, so it, it was a huge jump, a huge leap. And thank God, it's, I'm doing all right. How scared, okay, how scared were you? 
with, with the whole thing. I mean, you did it. You to me, you always seem really cool and calm. I know that's that's not na- you know, it's not actual the actual um, situation all the time. But how how scared were you to stop doing something that you've done for years? You got salary and benefits from to this thing that that you've never done before professionally. Extremely scary. Um, just because I kept seeing the bills coming. And, you know, I paid what I could and I left the rest. And, <laughs> I, you know, I, I, I you know, I, I, I was begging people to, you know, be patient. It's coming. Like, you know, I'm going to figure this out. So really it was honestly a leap of faith and really um, leaning heavily on my mentors and my mother who, who had faith in me from the beginning. Um, it was scary. Like, like this interview is scary because I, I have a terrible face, right? So, no, you're doing really well. I'm not. <laughs> so, <laughs> so but, you know, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? And keep going. Right. No, right. that's good. That's good. Okay, so what's been the hardest part um, about this, this, tra- this transition, this change of career? What's, the ha- what's been the hardest part compared to? When you, I mean, you went to school for graphic design and, you know, I don't know, you probably had network, you had networked and maybe had some job leads or I don't know, some, some sort of sense. And you said you relied on a lot on your mentors and your mom and what's, what's been the hardest part? I would say for, for the, in the transition, the hardest part was, I would say getting my family members on the bandwagon besides my mother convincing them that this was a good idea. Right. Um, and also continually convincing myself that it was a good idea. <laughs> right. Um, you know, dealing with other people's reactions to the change and, you know, worrying about the judgment that came along with it. And um, I guess also, well, presently, one of the struggles is being a barber is gaining that respect of not just being the only woman and and the pretty face in the shop that I actually have a skill that I'm working on getting better at, but I actually have something to give besides, you know, you know, to be this pretty symbol or the statue in a barbershop. Got it. You know? Yeah. So, you know, I'm always, I'm consistently proving myself and I, you know, surprising clients left and right because that, you know, some of some guys are motivated or, or people are motivated by, you know, how I physically look and it's not really about the haircut. Right. But right. how great is it when both of them match up? Oh my God. <laughs> right. That's a dope like a double <laughs> whammy. I like it. I like right, it. Right. Like Okay, so is there anything that you actually miss about the corporate world? I mean I know you said it wasn't for you. You realize that it you know long term it probably wasn't gonna be but is is there anything that you miss about working in, you know, corporate America? Absolutely not. Um, uh, I would say I miss I miss the good benefits and I miss uh, <laughs> the steady paycheck um, yeah. and the vacation, the, the built-in vacation time and the sick time. You know, yeah. I was I was a little bit spoiled by that. Um, I don't I don't very I don't really miss much. I, okay. I was pretty beat up by it yeah yeah i re- i remember i remember I, and and i am in in that realm so i it's like every day and almost sometimes even though every day is not the same every day sometimes feels the same because i think there's something not being fulfilled in doing something for someone else sometimes you know sometimes you find a great fit and that can motivate you and keep you interested in your field. But other times, if your your heart's not in it, like you said earlier, you know, it just it's not feeling right. So that's that's really cool. Um, so you mentioned a couple of things earlier about what you love about the barber, you know, the the par- barbershop, beauty salon environment. What's been your favorite? No, what do you love most about barbering specifically? What do you love most? I like, um, for me, because, you know, I'm a new barber, um, I like to see my growth and from, you know, there are certain things that I struggled with in the beginning 
and every day or with sometimes you know with the repeat clients I have a chance to do better the next time and when I see where I can see it they sometimes don't even see it. and I'll say do you remember when I started cutting you how this used to look and you're like but it always looked good to me and I'm like no but look at this and look at that and they're like hmm, I guess you're right you know um, I guess I being able to to for the first time in my life be a witness to my growth um, is something that's brand new to me you know, when you're a designer, when you're in art school, you you're you're competing not only with yourself, but you're competing with other students for the grade. You know, you're you're matched up um, next to other great artists as you are in the barbershop because right. you look to your right and your left. You know, the guys that I work with, they've been in the field 30, 15, you know, 20 years. Yeah. And and it shows. And here comes this rookie who, you know, people doubt and, and they're questioning, okay, well, she's got to be okay because she's, she's working with them, but do I take the risk and give, put my money and invest in her? Right. You know, right. Um, so the, the, this, it, it's, it's, a, it's a scary thing. I don't know if I answered that question. I think you um, did. Uh, what, you love, what you love most about you said you said watching your growth, like watching your skills right. evolve. And yeah, I mean that's that's great. That's good. Well, no, but also too, I also enjoy the social interaction that I get in the barbershop that I didn't get sitting behind the computer answering emails and answering phone calls and you know um, looking at the time and waiting for five o'clock. Right um, now, I work. 12 13 hour days and yes i'm tired but i don't ever go to sleep now without a smile on my face because i feel like i've either made somebody happy with their haircut right or the way that you know lifted their health self-esteem just physically or i have um um you know we had a good conversation and i've maybe had you know give not only advice but maybe shed some light that yeah. made that that you know something that they haven't thought about um, and that really gives me it, it 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 makes my everyday worthwhile like i go to have these conversations with my clients on top of giving the good haircut right. i get a reward in return by hearing how you know the continuation of their their story like oh this happened i went on vacation and i met so and so then the next week i get to hear how that first date went or how the wedding photos went or, you know, I had my first child and, you know, when my child gets older, I'm only going to have, you know, him or her come to you. Like those, that type of stuff means something to me. Um, so the social aspect of it is, I, I think, purely the most rewarding and the, on a daily basis. I can imagine. You're such an extroverted person and as a as a, a solid introverted person. I know you can't tell by doing this video, but this is really hard for an introvert to do, but do they teach do they have a class or something like that when you go to school for barbering or cosmetology or anything like that on the social aspect of that because I mean obviously the people who do well in that industry do well for a reason and I know the, the personality it lends to it. Like, I'm not going to go to anybody to do my hair if I don't like you, if I don't want to talk to you, I don't, don't want to see your face or something like that. So, just, I just, I'm just curious, do you even teach? Is there a class on that or a, a chapter or anything like that? Actually, the first chapter in the barbering uh, book is, is professional image. Now, they don't really teach, you know, how to they teach how to dress, how to greet your client, how to, um, you know, they suggest that, you know, you, you try to bring conversation and, um, you know, that type of stuff. But I feel it, no one can teach you how to be a per people person. No one can teach you how to really care about the person in your chair. That is something that you either were raised with or is a part of your your fiber right um i don't think you can teach how to how to be i mean you can teach um respect and 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 you know overall uh 
professionalism, but I don't know if you can teach how to really, um, to really yeah. love, you know, to, to, to love something that you don't know or to, 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 to touch somebody that, that, that you just met within 10 seconds. I think that's, that's something, one, that I've been blessed with, and two, I don't know, I really don't know where it came from. <laughs> Honestly, I just, it just happens. Um, yeah. But they do, they, there is, in school, they do teach you how to, you know, they say, you know, start, try to start a conversation, small talk, and make the person, you know, introduce yourself, and dress, make sure your hands are clean, and your tools are clean, and I, I think all that adds to it, but it's up to the barbers to take it to the to the next level. I get it. I get it. I mean, obviously, I, when we when you and I met, that that whatever you have, <laughs> Jennifer Choir, whatever, I was it, it was on me because I I mean I was spewing to you the first day we met in person and we had worked together for at least a year, mm -hmm. and I just. I don't know. You do. You have something that people just connect with. And I mean, we have mixed company, mixed, you know, some shared friends and I've been introduced people that you like and vice versa. And you just you give off an energy that I think people are really drawn to. And I can imagine how that helps you in the barbershop. So that's great. That's great. OK, so, yeah, so we, we talked about earlier. You do have a, a, um, a look that the average barber, at least, you know, in the DC area, I, I mean, I'm sure there are plenty of beautiful barbers out there, no offense to anybody. Um, but, you know, a typical barber is a man and, you know, they, they're cool, they're laid back, they're casual. You bring a different, I think, a, a elegance to barbering, even when you're not dressed up, you still, you still have a little something. So. You have this, and like you said, you were interested in makeup and hair and all that stuff as well. So why not cosmetology? Why not work? You know, why not do that with the barbering skill? Why'd you pick barbering instead? Um, that might be my next chapter. Actually, um, I'm not ruling it out. Like I said, as an artist, there's no limit to where you can take your talent, and I feel like one one avenue leads to the next and it's to an artist's disadvantage to to limit that right um so i might be a i might end up being a makeup artist down the road and i might you know i might get into cosmetology um barbering kind of drawed me in from the i was drawn in by barbering um mainly because the simplicity of it you know, you get the cut, you put the great shape up on it. You may, you know, you rub some moisture through it or some gel. It's quick, it's fast, it's it's like photography. You take that great shot and you're out. Mm -hmm. You yeah. may have to do a little buffing or some photoshopping, but when you know you've got that shot, it's that instant gratification that barbering gives that cosmetology takes a little bit more time to get. You know, you got to learn the cut, you got to do the blow dry, you gotta, you know, flat iron and and deal do all that. That's great. Yeah. But I don't have the patience right now. <laughs> right, right now, right I'm now. I'm not saying never, but right now I I'm into mastering and nothing's to me nothing sexier than a than a man a clean crisp haircut on a man. No, that's right. Yeah, I agree. I, agree. I don't have to come off the bar off the uh, the basketball court. When they get that fresh cut, they look like a million bucks. They do. Period. Oh, like man makeup. A haircut is man makeup. Yeah, that's a good <laughs> analogy. <I can. laughs> that's a good analogy. And I'm into it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna pause for a second just to remind anyone who might be looking or watching from their computer. There's a Q and A button somewhere on your screen. Find it. If you have a question for Leslie, you can start typing those in now. You know, unfortunately, you can't be on the call with me. Only I can be talking to Leslie right now. So if you want, if you do have a question, feel free to use the Q&A um, and type it there. We're, gonna add, we're a little past halfway through my questions for her. So if you have anything, just let, you know, put it there and then I'll, I'll ask Leslie on your behalf. So, okay, let's move on. Um, 
you okay so you had a birthday recently but you also celebrated what you coined as your barberversary yes what was that about like you know what why what, what was that about well i came up with the term barberversary because um i feel like this this barber thing is to me maybe what a master's degree or a PhD is to someone else. It's the next chapter, it's the next move into fully developing who I am as a person. So um, one, I, I did it to thank my clients um, to, and to let them know, yes, I'm new at this. I thank you for your support. Um, I'm celebrating where, where I am, you know, a year, two years later. Um, but the barberversary to me was pro means to me. Um, it's like, you know, the, 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 the first year of something great. I don't know how great it will become. I don't know how far it will go, but, um, it was such a shift for me, but I haven't, I, I truly haven't been happier. That's great. Okay. Um, All right. So that's one year later. What about the next five years? I mean, so, okay, there's a potential. You might be delving more into more cosmetology fields or something like that. But what would you like to see happen with the Lady Clipper brand? Like with Lady Clipper, I'm just going to, I'm not going to just call it a brand because I think it's more than that. Mm -hmm. um, especially for you. I know you. And like you said, you're an artist. So, Lady Clipper is a part of a bigger brand that is Leslie. So what what are you envisioning? What kind of dreams do you have for Lady Clipper, you know, five years from now? Ooh. Um <laughs> be honest, you know, you don't you might not know, but I mean just <laughs> take a moment and think about it for a second and see what comes up. I mean, I would I do I I do have dreams of opening um, a small boutique style shop. Um, style shop. What does that mean? What does what, that mean? When, I mean, when I say boutique, I mean three chairs, three hand-picked barbers, maybe me on a few days, mm -hmm. um, really, um, making the place somewhere where everyone's comfortable making the price point where, you know, maybe a little bit more than your local barbershop, but not, um, to the degree where you're scratching your head and, and wondering what you paid for. Right. Um, so I kind of, it's kind of, kind of meshing the salon, you know, and the barbershop in one. Giving them the, the, the not only the man, but men usually are, are, are predominantly at a barbershop. What, what some women, some most, a lot of women seek in their hair salon is that luxury. It's that, um, if that look, but you don't have to pay something that is so out of out of reach to yeah. get. So I'm, I'm for me, I'm trying to find the middle between the the spa uh, luxury salon experience and the neighborhood barbershop. That would be that would that's sort of my dream, you know, um, to kind of take it to another level, but not take it to a place where it's unfamiliar right. or uncomfortable for the everyday man, the construction worker, the, you know, the man with dirt under his nails. <laughs> right. You can feel comfortable there too. Right. Okay. Yeah. Right. So that would, that would probably take you out of the doing of your, of your craft. So, I mean, what do you um, it would be doing, I would still be doing, but I would be developing, um, in a different way. So I'll okay. still be crafting, but it'll be crafting, you know, I would hopefully, you know, hire great barbers to do that part where I, I would work on the promotion and I would work on, I'll work in the more in the background, but of course, if people want me, if my, I would never abandon my clients. Okay. But I, I don't know how I would take care of the, you know, the volume and <laughs> <laughs> my shop at the same time. It, it would be a very tricky um, balance, but I'm not saying it won't be impossible. Right. Well, the good thing about developing a great brand is that it develops trust in your customers. So if kind of like where you are, 
if the people in there are working with you and vice versa, there's got to be something to it. You know, if they know you and they trust Lady Flipper, the brand, then they will definitely um, not be as intimidated to try someone who is working, you know, in your establishment if you had that at the time. So that's cool. That's really cool. Yeah. Yeah, I'm definitely, I, I'm, I want to be, I want it to be very comfortable. Anybody that I work, you know, I, I would hire, it personality would, would trump over the cut or the skill. Because I feel like skill is something that can develop and can be taught to, to a certain degree. Right. But. Oh, we have a blank out briefly. See if you come back. Can you let me know if you can hear me? You okay, back? we're back. I think we're back. Wait one second. We're back. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. So to a certain degree. Okay. We're good. Okay. Um. So until then, all right. It's not. It's not 2020 yet. So until then, let's talk about maybe some of the most or the most, the coolest thing that you've done barbering in this one this past year. Like, what's what's been the coolest experience or the coolest anything that's come up for you as a barber? Well, I've had my first celebrity client, um, Dougie Fresh, uh, a few cool. months ago. He came to DC for uh, Emancipation Day, and um, a friend of mine connected me with him, and I was so happy to serve him um, and to get to know him. Like you know, I've always heard his music, and and uh, my brother was more into him than I was. Yeah, <laughs> he's a little you, bit older. You do he's a little. <laughs> yeah, I was a, I was younger. My brother was more into it, but I am familiar with his music, so I knew like cutting his hair was meant more to my brother than it was, <laughs> to, you know, to me. <laughs> so as soon as I got the call that you know Doggy Fresh wants you to to make him fresh, I text my brother and I was like, Hey, I gotta get. Hey, I got. I have five minutes to tell you this, but I'm on my way to cut Doggy Fresh's hair. And he's like. You're lying. I'm like, I'm lying. You know what I mean? Like, um, that it was, it, it, that, I think that was probably, it was my first and only celebrity. However, because um, I'm not the starstruck type. Right, right. At all. I mean, I feel behind every, every icon, behind every uh, uh, star, there's a person. You know, right. it's not this, the image. It, it means something, but it's not everything. Right. And 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 talking to Dougie Fresh and you know him asking me personal questions about how what are you doing here? You don't you look like you belong in a salon or why you know you know him really showing interest to in me really inspired me because I'm like you know if I ever were to make it as big as him in my own right, mm -hmm. I would always want to show interest and care about whoever is serving me at, at the time. Um, so I think if we're talking celebrity or we're talking the coolest thing, I would say meeting someone that I had heard and my brother had idolized, you know, my older brother had idolized and actually, you know, it, it was kind of like I'm proving that, you know, it, it was a little, a little trophy for me. I think we froze again, Lise. Lise, are you there?
Are you there? I'm back. Okay. I will we'll find out on the recording what happens when we both link out, but we're still black. We're still live. So Okay. All right. That's the um so we left off on that was the coolest thing. You see, you see this person in the background in here? No, no, I'm not. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's my body back there. Yeah, this is live. This is live. <laughs> it's okay. So, okay. So, Dougie Fresh, your first celebrity client. I'm sure there are going to be more in the future, some kind of way. I mean, you just, yeah. Even that, if, that was, Even if yeah. I never get another. So called yeah. celebrity. I, I I I really have built great relationships with my, you know, so called everyday clients, you know, friendships and bonds that probably won't ever leave me. Right. You don't get that behind a computer. You can't phone those relationships responding to emails. Right. You don't. Off. You just you don't. don't. And I'm not putting down anybody in corporate America or the corporate America, you know, the, the corporate experience because it's because without it, I don't think I could be as good at what I do um, without that background. Right. So I'm thankful. Right. Okay, good. All right. So I've always wanted to ask you, this is, this is, it's a stupid, it seems stupid, but a person, we're, we're different. We're, 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 we're friends, but we're, we're very different in a lot of ways. So my thing is, how do you have so much energy to do all of the things that you get done? You, I think you're one of the most productive people that I know. Again, always up to something, doing something. Girl, you make shoes. I don't even know. how. Who makes shoes? I'm like, who makes shoes? I don't understand. How, where do you have to have purses? You can make purses and shoes and hair and graphic designs and decorating your mom decorates so you help her do that too you babysit you got a million godchildren how do you <laughs> i do then you don't, don't even seem human and then you and you go to bed early i do you go to bed early leslie i can't but, but lisa if i don't go to bed how evil am i <laughs> i don't know i've never seen you evil ever ever that, okay. Really, well, really. I, I took it. I hide it well. You do. No, but, yeah. I, I mean, it, it just all comes from all of that comes from how I was raised. You know, I come. My family members. We all go to bed early, and we wake up early, and we get it done. Get it done. Be over it, and move forward. Um, I don't know. I don't know what that, where the uh, motivation or the push comes from. Um. I mean, I do know, but, <laughs> but I mean, I have, I've had great examples. My dad is an entrepreneur. My mom is a registered nurse. So, um, between those two, those are two hustling jobs, you know? Um, so when you're raised by hustlers, you become a person that hustles and I'm not talking drugs. I'm just right. talking about time. Time is, has always been something that is, um, been important to me have to make sure I'm on time, that things are done in time. And um, else I just feel, I don't feel balanced. Um, so I get a lot done, more done than probably most people in a day because uh, I don't I don't hate the feeling of wasting time or that I, a whole day has passed and I haven't accomplished anything that I've set forth. All right, Lisa, I think we froze again. Hello? Yep. Yep, okay, we're back. All right, we're back, we're back. <laughs> Still here, so we're just talking about the hustling family, <laughs> not drugs, not talking about drugs. Not drugs, we don't do drugs. At least I don't. Right, right. <laughs> All right, so that actually leads me into my next question. 
I, you you and you told us who what your father does versus what you know what your father did and what your mom was trained to do. Where do you think you got your creativity? Did you get it from your mom or your dad? Oh, you starting? To I know. Put you on. You gonna start a riot? You gonna start there. a riot? But my mom, I would say, I would say that they are they are both very creative in their own right. Mm -hmm. However, um, because my later years in life, I was raised by my mother. My dad was always involved in a part of my life. Um, right. But my mom, I, I you know, my mom used to make dolls, you know, so and she 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 was always a crafter and. Um, did Christmas decorations and decor and wreaths and you know she would have little um, mini craft shows in our on her dining room table and invite the neighbors and make money. She was a registered nurse. She didn't have to, right? But she right. did it because I mean, in my opinion, and she might I don't know if she'll agree or disagree, but she did it because it was something she loved and she was passionate about and gave her peace I, that. From the outside looking in so right. whether she verbally told me these things growing up and witnessing it and the joy that it gave her and and i did question sometimes like why is she spending all these hours on sewing this doll or making this thing but mm -hmm. i didn't get it until i got it if that makes any sense i didn't get it till that i, I realized that some of her was in me right i got it you know? Yeah, so I think creativity, definitely my mom, survival, a combination of the two, yeah. and and that unconditional love that I try to put out to customers and friends, and, um, it, and it can be draining, don't get me wrong. Right. Uh, that comes from, from, from both parents. That's good. You know, that no matter what, that respect, it, it trumps anything that you can do or cannot do. That's true. So that's good. that's good. Okay. Well, those are actually that's those are all the questions that I have. I don't see any questions live come okay. up, coming up on the field. Do you have like okay? So if someone wanted to be this is this is a bit of an, 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 a bit of advice that maybe you want to offer someone who is thinking of becoming a barber, especially maybe a woman, maybe a a young lady who's interested, but you know maybe not think. Lost you again, Lisa. Bring it back. I'm just gonna sit here until we resume. And, and look at you back. I'm back, but I didn't hear anything you you were yeah. saying. So I'm asking a great question. I know. <laughs> I was saying so. All right, so let's see if we can get this last question out, and then I don't know. I don't know. Google Plus might be against us right now, but who knows? Again, we're talking about the internet. So, if someone wanted to become a barber, again, maybe a young lady who didn't think that the field would be welcoming to her, or I lost connection again, Lise.
All right, that time, that time I went out. Good grief. You here? Yeah, I'm here. I can't see you, but I can hear you. So let's just keep it moving. Yeah. Let's just keep moving. Last question. If I could just get it out. What okay. advice would you give to someone interested in becoming a barber? Maybe a young lady, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. But just anyone interested who, yeah, based on your experience, what, what advice would you get? Um, you really, I would say, um, as a female bar, female interested in barbering, you have to first develop the skill of, of ignoring because people are going to have things to say. Um, whether you're good, bad, or anywhere in between, they're going to have, because you're a woman in a, a male dominated field, they're always going to feel you don't. Maybe you don't do it better. There's some people are going to feel that you do it better because you are a woman. Um, ignore all of that and really look within and you know put all of the the collective pieces that that have come from your past all together and push through. But it it really is about um, quieting all that noise in the background so that and you can and, and so that you can hear you know, your, your own inner voice. If that, I mean, I'm not trying to be all Jerry Springer with it, but um, you know <laughs> no. what I mean? Like it's yeah. hard because you, you're going to have people in your shop that are supportive, not so supportive, maybe jealous of you. Maybe um, some days are better than others, but as long as you, you hold your course and you, and you're focused and you, re, you just ignoring it, just kind of let all that stuff, you know, develop rubber bumpers, even, right. um, and just stay humble and know that you you may not be at everybody's level, but you will be. Just keep working at it. All right, Lisa, I'm back. All right. I don't know what keeps happening, but yeah, I mean that. We're, yeah, we're almost we're almost done. So the last thing you said was staying humble. Yeah. 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 Big biggest life, you know, you you know worse than anybody else and you know better. Right. And those are for me, those are those are words to live by. You're not there's you might not be there, but you'll get there. Okay. And and and, and it takes time. Everything takes time. Right. Right. You know? Well, again, I, I'm in awe of your transition. I think you did an excellent job switching careers. Most people don't do it so, you know, I don't know, aren't, aren't, can't be as, as successful as somewhat calm. But I know it's been a, a road. I know it's been a journey. I know it's still a journey. You're not even close to being finished. So I just get <laughs> God, Leslie, very good. I'm so proud of you. Um, you have so many people who, who really appreciate your skill and what you do. In addition, just are motivated by um, the things that you keep putting out creatively and just as a person that does love people. So, I mean, you found a really good calling and I think it really suits you. So congrats on that. Um, Thank you. You're welcome. So I think, again, I don't see any questions posted. And because the internet is acting stupid, I think we should just end our little session here. I think it was really fun to awesome. have this conversation with you. I didn't ask you, I've never asked you all of those questions before, but now I feel like I have a really good sense of your transition and just how it's all turning out. So, you know, you have, I have I'm a fan. So just keep oh. <laughs>
<laughs> Thank you. Do you have anything else you want to say? Do you want to say to people who watch this video now or who will be watching later? Anything else you know, is coming up or just anything you want to say? I just want to thank everybody for who's to, who has tuned in, taken the time, who will later look at it on YouTube. Please come see me, call me, text me. I'm always willing to talk and, you know, make an appointment. <laughs> yes, you are. And don't forget to follow you on Instagram and Facebook. Just look, just, just search for Lady Clipper and... They can find you and see what you're doing, what you're up to, and some of the, the cuts that you do and styles because you don't you have a very diverse clientele, which is really appealing. You don't just cut, you know, black men or you know, women or anything like that. You cut everyone's hair. You do a really good job too. So I'm a I'm an advocate of short hair, as you can see. So I like a good cut. I like a good cut. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. And it's only gonna get better. So you know, this is only year one. Yeah. So hopefully every year it gets better. Maybe we'll do it another interview next year. Yeah, maybe we'll see. We'll see what happens. We'll see okay. what else happens. <laughs> Thank you, Lisa, for your time and for putting this together. Bye bye. I had already said bye, but I'm I'm back. It's still it's still it's still stopping. Oh, it'll stop on its own. No, I hit stop. It said, "Oh, I can't stop right now." So this is also being recorded. Oh, and that's fine. So we'll continue to talk. Yeah, so over my shoulder, I have my um, I have my cut up tank tops that um, were to feature all my first year of uh, of barbering. One of my friends came up with a slogan and I ran with it. Um, if you like one, contact me, Lady Clipper on Facebook and Lady Clipper on Instagram. Hope to hear from you soon. Still not stopped yet. We just keep talking. Go get some water. Go to the bathroom. I don't know.